and create interest. Find out what the problems are and then, and then really sell them on the fact that we can solve their problem better than anybody else can. And in your world, that's going to mean two things. For, for example, I would never put my, future, allow, put my future in the hands of anybody else other than me as it relates to my sales career. That means I would never rely on any third party person to generate leads for me and my business. And that be the only source of leads that I can generate. Does that make sense? Because what if that person don't, don't generate the leads? Like we're talking about this morning with the leadership team, extreme ownership. Extreme ownership is I'm not going to place my future in somebody else's hands. Okay, maybe they create leads for us, maybe they don't. I, I want to go out into the marketplace, circulate and create interest in my product and service and then articulate and, and sell that product and service to people. So if I never have anybody spend any marketing dollars on me, I can still generate money. Does that make sense? So when it comes to the selling system, the biggest thing I see with a lot of people is their activity is not high enough. They're not going out into the marketplace. They're not touching and talking to enough people. They're not tagging enough people. They're not overcoming enough objection. Their volume is just low because they're not, they're not getting in front of enough people. So when you're looking at your, your business, which, which area of the sales system do you struggle with the most? Okay, and I'm going to give you the areas to pick. Is it the explanation of service? Having something powerful to say? Is it the, se the selling system, actually working a system every day, coming into the day with a plan, working the system? Is it in your follow-up when a person indicates interest, or is it in after the sale generating referrals from your current sales? Which of those areas do you feel like you struggle with the most? Well, I mean, you're, they're, they're just, you guys think of it this way. They're just people. They're just humans. You t talk to them. My, my goal would be to call them the day of. Buyer's remorse on a mortgage kicks in th within 30 seconds of signing the deal. So I would call people the day of, say congratulations on your big house. Obviously, maybe you're doing that. I would call them two days after. Hey, you getting moved in? Anything we can do to help you? I'd call them two weeks after. Hey, I know you're probably getting settled in at this time. Is excited? I'd call them two months after. And then I would try to stay involved in their life as much as I could so that they come back for round two and they tell other people about you. If you follow what I'm saying? Most people, the transaction is over after the mortgage, after a person gets in the house. And that's really sad because in my opinion, if, the, if, the, if, if I'm playing the percentages, the percentages tell me the average person is going to buy four to six houses in their lifetime. I personally have purchased four houses and I'm only 41 years old. Does that make sense? I've also purchased other homes too. So what if you handled all of those? What if you got me on my first house? You follow what I'm saying? So I want you to think of the long term play here versus the short term of I just did this deal. And, and i got to move on to the next deal. I want you to think extraction. How do I get you and three of your friends? That's what, that's what I want you thinking. And how do I get you on all five of your or four of your houses that you purchased? And how do, I, how do I just stay engaged with you? Not only for that, for, for the referability of that person. When people talk about, well, I'm doing a mortgage, right? I mean, the real problem with the, the business model of the mortgage is it only happens one time and then it doesn't happen for a couple of years. You're not making recurring revenue. You know, if you're an insurance salesman, you, I sell you insurance and I make money off of you every month. And then I try to sell you some more insurance and I want your friends, but, but I'm at least making money the whole time. The only way to do that in the mortgage business is through your referrals, is that you're getting so many referrals, okay? So yours is generating enough leads, enough opportunity, or after the close? After the close, okay. so Okay. For my previous clients. Are, are you doing anything beyond after the first touch going second and third and fourth touch? Uh, I go the two month, but after the two month one, that's when I stop figuring. Like, I don't know what else to talk to them about. Like, yeah. How's your life? Like, yeah. you know, kind of deal. I feel awkward sure. talking to them about that. Well, <clears throat> think of it this way. H how many people are we talking about here? Are we talking about two a month, three a month, four a month that you're closing? Uh, yeah, it's usually about four or five. Okay. So in a given year, you got 60 people, 60 families. Um, my real estate agent calls me almost every day or every other day. We talk about life, success, business, marriage, kids. I mean, we have a real relationship. Do you follow what I'm saying? He engages with me at that level. Now, he also does that with 25 other people or 24 other people because we work a strategy called the top 25. And so what he does is he calls on me and checks on me and then he calls the next person and then he works the next person and then he goes to lunch with this person. He goes to breakfast with the group of people that use him. 
Then he calls on people during the morning. Then he goes to lunch with a group of people. You see what I'm saying? And throughout the week, he's kind of working those 25 relationships. Because my strategy is, out of everybody that you've used, out of everybody that you've, you've used before, I don't know if there's markers here or not. It's, you got some markers back there? Out of everybody that you, that you work with, let's say this. Let's say you work with 60 families this year. Let's say you do five a month, five mortgages, which is a, which is a, a, a great number. Thank you. That's a great number, okay? Out of those 60, let me ask you this question. Let's just say you work with 60 people. Out of those 60, do you think you could find 25 that you really enjoyed working with? Yeah. Okay? Now, here's the concept. The top 25 says this. Out of these 25 people, we're going to try to get three referrals, which is 75 new deals a year. How, so the question becomes, what do these 25 people get? Okay, how often are you going to contact? So do, do you talk contact three a day, every week? My agent works 25 relationships, and he does that throughout the week. He's banging on these people. So what else does he get? Special events, um, parties, access to the group, gifts, Newsletters, that makes sense? See, what I do is I build a club, and my club is, um, is people that pay $25,000 a year for coaching to me, and I got 25 of those people, okay? My goal is to get 40. 40 of those people is a million dollars of revenue, and I'm coaching 40 of the best people because they're spending some significant money on themselves. Does that make sense? Now, if you were spending $25,000 a year with me to get coached, you don't get the same thing that a person that's spending $4.99 a month to get coached. Right? Like, like, you don't talk to me at $4.99. You can talk to me at that level. You follow what I'm saying? Now, I believe out of 40 of these, I can make a million dollars a year, number one. But they're 40 of the best people. But here's, here's the deal. We do all kinds of things for these people that we don't do for everybody else. That make sense? Private events, special newsletters, access to me. That we're constantly looking for things to do for these people because that's where our highest referability is. And these 25 people, guess, guess what they do? They run around other people who have money. Follow what I'm saying? So they bring friends. So my goal is to get 75 leads a year out of my best 25 people. Now, I'm not saying all 60. There may be some people you work with that you don't ever want to work with again. So that's why I always joke and say, have you ever um, worked 15 months to catch something that you wish you didn't catch? You know what I'm saying? Have you ever worked hard to get a client only to wish you never caught them? You follow what I'm saying? I guarantee out of those 60 people, some of them you didn't like working with. Some of them are crazy, disrespectful, didn't appreciate you. What I'm saying is go back to that list and say, here's 20 to 25 that I love working with, maybe two or three a month, and increase your frequency to those people. Okay? Build long-term value with those people. Does that make sense to you? Well, I want to expand you. I want to challenge you on that. I, I, listen, I, I have people in mind there in Alaska, Phoenix, California, Mexico. I, do st I still throw special events for them. And guess what? They come. You know why? Because I sell it to them that they should be there. You know what I'm saying? I want to expand your thinking a little bit. In a global society, we can sell to anybody on the planet. Right? We can also build rapport and relationship with anybody on the planet. We're not limited to just Brentwood. We can literally build relationship and rapport with people in the world. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to come, but that don't mean you can't have client appreciation events. I'm doing a client appreciation event with a mortgage originator in September. And I want you to think about this, because this is how I want your mind thinking. He does one big client appreciation event per year, and he partners with four other people, title company, insurance company, coach, and the, um, and we do a big event for 500 people, okay? We, we have a major country music singer. Last year it was Randy Hauser. This year it's Lee Bryce. That artist is typically twenty-five dollars to $30,000 to get the artist. Then, so we may spend fifty to seventy-five thousand on the event. He invites all of his past clients. We, as sponsors, get to invite fifty of our top clients. So we take my fifty best clients. The insurance person brings fifty of their best clients. He brings three hundred of his past clients, and and I sell it like this. This is a private special event. We rent a this big beautiful barn. We have a major country music singer. You know, it's going to be five hundred other people there. It's going to be a major night, and I try to push my people to come into town. And from Alaska, man, come, come in. 
And I try to combo that with a two, two or three other events that week. So on Tuesday of that week, I got this going on. On Thursday, I got this going on. So if you live in Phoenix or whatever, if you want to come in, I'd love to do it. Now, you may say that's unreasonable in the mortgage world, but what I'm, I just want you thinking at a higher frequency. Does that make sense? If a person lives in Alaska and you do a mortgage for them, you still, they still got friends they can invite. I'm just trying to build community and build rapport. That's the concept of the top 25. Okay? And that mortgage originator is going to do 85, let's say do $85 million this year. But, but he does four major customer appreciation events per year. That's the big one. But then he does three other ones, and he has two or 300 people at these events. Kids. So you, you see, that's, that's part of his strategy is if I can get this reoccurring concept. Okay? So I just want you thinking, if I'm going to build a big-time mortgage business, part of the system is I'm pulling out strategies in the system and I'm activating those strategies. One of those is the top 25, okay? Now, let's say I live in Alaska and you did my mortgage. Maybe I don't come to your event, but still, maybe you check on me every, you know, two months. You send me something in the mail. Like, I'm trying to send things like newsletters out. I'm talking like old school newsletters, like the newsletters that come to your door. You follow what I'm saying? Then I send database emails, this, text messages, phone calls, whatever. Any, any kind of way I can reach you is what I'm trying to do, just because I want to build that rapport. It, it's, that's the number I'm focused on. Imagine how many more deals you could do a year if you had 75, if you had 25 great people sending you that, that business. Okay? That's frequency. All right? So, all right, so that's one challenge. Who else has got a challenge in the selling system? I think a big challenge that we have um, as a company overall is our 7 to 10 touches. Mm -hmm. We say go 7 to 10 touches, mm -hmm. but we, we lack the structure to say this is how you do it. Yeah. This is the frequency that you do it yep. and how to track that and measure it. Yep. Now, one of the things, one of the things that I do is I want you to think, and, I, I, and that's a great point. The stat I'm saying is this. Think of it this way. I go out into the marketplace and I create opportunity. These are leads. How do I create opportunity? The strategies I'm using. So I'm trying to get you to do a hit list, have a farm club, work a top 25, and if you don't understand these concepts, this is the time to ask, okay? I'm trying to get you to work a database, where you're communicating. I'm trying to get you to do events. I'm trying to get you some form of social media. I'm trying. I'm trying to get you to pull. I'm trying to get you to pull uh, past clients. What I'm trying to do is trying to get you to work multiple strategies. Okay. I'm trying to get you to do that from nine to eleven a.m. every day. So from nine to eleven, I may be calling on new people. Listen, I was cold, on the way over this morning. I was cold calling somebody. There was a conference I wanted to speak at. I went online, found the, found the person who put it on, found the phone number, called him. Hey, this is Coach Burke. I know you have big speakers like me at your event. I don't know if you saw me at 10X or not, but I'd love to come speak at your insurance conference. That's a complete cold call. I don't know the person. I've never talked to the person. Now, all he can do is what? No. Never call me back or say no. So when I come into the day, I'm calling on typically three to five new people. Okay? If I'm a mortgage originator, who could those people be? Real estate agents, strategic partners, insurance people, divorce attorneys, CPAs. I'm calling on people every day. Some of them I know, some of them I don't know. Now, sometimes I may say, hey, Stephanie told me to call you. I don't know if you know I'm working with her over at Church Hill. Um, you know, but, but, but I'd like to schedule a meeting for us to sit down and explain my services to you. Mortgage originators don't think like that, though. They don't call on people. Let me tell you the worst group. Real estate agents don't. If I was a real estate agent, you know who I'd be calling on? Every successful person in Brentwood. You know what I say? I don't know if you have a real estate agent or not. I don't know how often you talk to a real estate agent, but I'm in the business of professionally helping people buy, sell, build, and finance real estate. And I'd love to just spend some time with you to show you what we can do. I don't know if another agent has ever done that for you or not. You know what? No other agents even called on people. They don't call on people. You follow what I'm saying? Some people go, you know what? I've never had an agent call on me. I'd be happy to take a meeting with you. What my point is, is I don't know what's going to happen on the hit list. These are just targets. Now, what's my alternative to this? If I work at Churchill, what's my alternative? Go to the office and wait on what? Wait on leads. Where's the leads going to come from? Where? Marketing. marketing. Who's paying for the marketing? Churchill. Okay. Are you putting your, are you putting your future in somebody else's hands? Yeah. Yeah. What if Matt Clark walks in tomorrow and says, marketing is cut off. What are you going to do then? You want to fries with that? <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. 
Here, here's what I'm saying. I want you to think like a business owner. Nobody's paying for leads for me. I have to create my own leads. You know how I create my own leads? I get my little butt up and I go out in the world and I circulate like a little flying donkey running around the world trying to generate interest. When I leave here today, I'm going to go get in front of another group of people. They, there may or may not be any customers in that room. Does that make sense? I don't know until I do what? Get in front of them. Everybody see that? So the, the, the alternative is you come into the day and you sit around and say, boy, I sure do hope Churchill creates some leads for me. I sure do hope Dave Ramsey creates some leads for me. I sure do hope somebody else creates some leads for me. Now, is that place in your future in somebody else's hands? Yes or no? Now, what if you get to work and there's 50 leads for you, which is great. Listen, I know originators that at one time are getting 400 leads that are now getting 100. You follow what I'm saying? This cycle, there's a cycle to everything. So what I'm trying to get you to do is come in and say, look, there's three to five people I'm calling on today. I'm going to call on an insurance person. I'm going to call on this. Now, if you're out there circulating, you're going to come around these people. You're going to see these people and go, I'm going to follow up with that cat and that cat and that cat. Okay? That's the concept of the hit list. Could your hit list consist of current clients you're calling to ask for a referral? Yes. Any new money, the hit list is just new money. So from 9 to 11, what I do is I look and I, and I say, well, who's my current clients? I go straight to people then in the first 30, 60, 90 days. And I may say, hey, how you doing? Are you experiencing this? Do you understand what's going on? Do you understand the rhythm? How can I help you get to a better place? And who, who else can you bring with you next month? Because i got another training coming up on Thursday in Cool Springs. That makes sense? I'm always pushing people to something. Always. Push them to something and follow up. Push them to something and follow up. So my hit list can be current clients. It could be past clients. And my model would be two day of, two days after, two weeks after, two months after, and then some frequency with them. Now, if you don't like, if you don't like working with them, that's up to you. I, I, it depends on how much you like your money. <laughs> okay? You, you service a lot of people, there are going to be some people you don't like. You agree with that? Don't get mad at your money. Okay, so my hit list, so my hit list could be current clients I'm asking for referrals, straight up partnerships I'm trying to build with people. Like in, in my world, here's what I believe. If I'm you, my doctor should be sending me referral business. My attorney should be sending me referral business. My insurance guy should be sending me referral business. My real estate agent should send me. Those are what I call strategic partners. Okay, so if Stephanie and I are business partners, she's my insurance person and she's not sending me any business, I'm going to call them and say, hey Stephanie. I believe invested partnership here. I'm helping you grow your insurance business. You should be helping me grow my mortgage business. What do we got to do to make sure we're on the same page with each other? Follow what I'm saying? Now, so my hit list is three to five targets every day. Does everybody see how this is a proactive approach to building the business? This initiates a selling cycle in my opinion. Now, if you don't have a good explanation of service when you get on the phone, you don't have anything to say. Okay, the EOS gives you something valuable to say. Here's what we believe, here's why we believe it. Here's what it is we do. Now, give me an example of the farm club. People in your pipeline. That's right. So these people at some point said, I'm interested. But you haven't closed them. Now, to your point, this initiates the seven touches. Now, let's talk about those touches. How frequent should they be? Depends on what their timeline is. There you go. How do I know what the timeline is? What can I ask? Here's a question I ask people on a scale of 1 to 10, how serious are you about this right now? Oh, we're an 8. Okay, great. I just need to know that. That helps me with my follow-up. If it's an 8, you should be calling them every day. Right? If it's a 2, maybe they're just looking. Maybe they're just looking. But I even challenge people who say it's a 2. Okay? Here's what I say. I understand you're at a 2, but if I brought you a deal you couldn't resist, would, it, would a 2 go to an 8 pretty quickly if I brought you something you couldn't turn down? They go, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Timing is an excuse a lot of people use in the sales cycle. Here's what I say. Timing, listen, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We don't know where the rates are going to be six months from now. Here's what I know today. I can lock you in at this rate today, right? And if you like it, inventory's low, take action on it, okay? Take action on it. You're qualified. But I ask that qualifying question on a scale of 1 to 10, how serious are you about this right now? Now, that tells me should I push hard or should, are you just in the sales cycle? Now, these touches should be one of two types. Linear and nonlinear. Now let me tell you the difference. A linear touch is I come straight at a person and I push them hard. Have you seen enough to make a decision? Okay, it seems like you want to do this, but you're stuck on this one thing. Am I right about that? See how I push a person? That's a linear touch. Think of that like a knockout punch. What's the worst thing they could say, guys? No, I'm not interested. I'm not doing my new. Okay, 
Would you rather know now? Would you rather chase them for 15 months trying to figure this out? That's why I typically say, would you rather know in 15 seconds or chase somebody for 15 months? On a scale of 1 to 10, how serious are you about this? Oh, you're 8 or 9? Great. Let's go ahead and get you started. Now, when I follow up with them, I may follow up with the linear. Now, I'm going to make sure I didn't misunderstand you. The last time we talked, you told me you were an 8 on wanting to take action on this. Okay? It seems like you want to do it, but you're stuck on one thing. What could they be stuck on? And how fast do you want to know that? Okay? You're right. It is a big purchase. But I believe every person deserves the right to have their own oasis. Their home is a personal oasis that they go home to every night. It is an investment, but it's an investment in your future and in your happiness. And in, and, right? So, so I just coach them through that. I agree with them. It's a big purchase. It is a big purchase. Okay? But having said that, this is the one thing you're going to go home to every single night at the end of a long, hard day. You follow what I'm saying? Now, what, what are other things they could say when you push them? I need to talk to my spouse. I need to talk to my spouse. I understand. Hey, is there any other reason outside of you talking to your spouse that would keep you from moving forward on this? See, I asked that question. I'm isolating them, okay? Because can't we both agree if your spouse is on board, we're going to move forward with this, aren't we? Yeah, let's go ahead and draw it up and go ahead and get you, get you started. That way, when you talk to your spouse and you get them on board, because I'm sure they're going to be, we can go ahead and make this process go a lot smoother. Follow what I'm saying? What I'm trying to get you to just take a little bit more control. So a linear touch is a straight line approach to where you're going right at somebody and pushing them just a little bit. Look, it seems like you want to do this. You told me you're eight. What's stopping you, right? What's keeping you from moving forward? What is a nonlinear touch? A direct campaign, an email. Yeah, a nonlinear is a softer touch. Here's, here's a great one. Uh, Patrick, I just did this with someone just like you just the other day. I just helped a family just like you get in their first house. Here's what they said about it. They were incredibly happy. Take a look at this and let's talk to the buy-in the business today. See how a little bit softer that was? That's like a little jab. Okay? So what I do is I jab three times. Boom, boom, boom. How often do I jab? Could be every day. Depends on how, how serious they are about this. Does that make sense? If it's a big deal, I'm, I'm banging on them every single day. And I'm hitting them in different ways. Now, to her point, what I do is I have a little system I use. But it's not a science. Sometimes I mix it up. So I may take the meeting. That's touch number one. Then number two is I summarize the meeting. So I send an email and I say, look, we talked about three things. You told me you're interested in this. There's two things I went and did. And I summarized that meeting. And then I push them to something. I never want you to forget this because this is one of my best sales tactics. I push people to something and I follow up. I never leave it open. You follow what I'm saying? So I'm constantly like, hey, take a look at this. I'm going to call you tomorrow. Take a look at this and let's discuss it by end of business today. I push people to things. Okay? Now, after I do my summary and I push to something else, I'm trying to get back face-to-face, -face, a meeting. Or it could be on the phone or whatever. Okay? My third touch. Okay? Let's say I don't get the meeting. Number four, I send a direct. My direct may look like this. Hey, we're losing momentum. I may do a video. You know how I do a video? Take a phone like this right here, which is a basic iPhone, and I stick it right up in my face, and I do this right here. I say, hey, this is Coach Burke. Look, I feel like we're losing momentum on this deal. Call me back so we can talk about it. There's two or three strategies I got lined up for you, okay? And I go straight at them. I do a direct. Hey, we're losing momentum, right? Here's what I say. I can't help you until you commit. But once you commit, I'm not going to let you fail. See how I challenge people? Now, number five, so I may do that with a direct, anyway, video, audio. Do you guys use any type of video software, Bomb, Bomb, anything? No, but I think Bomb, Bomb is awesome. Okay. All right, so, so Bomb, Bomb is a video. I use Vidyard. Vidyard is a Google Chrome extension, which is a free thing if you have Google. And I shoot quick videos, and a video, a quick video would look like uh, it's real simple. I click it on my computer. It goes three, two, one. It records. I can copy that link and then share that link. And so a lot of times what I'll do is I will send out a Vidyard video and I'll copy and paste it to my email and it pops up as a video on my thing and it's super simple. But sometimes I hit people with a the, with the short video. And many times that's something that'll push them off, off the fence. Okay? Now, once I get to touch number five, what am I trying to do? Proof of concept. So I'll send an email, another email that said, look, I've, this year alone I've been able to help 40 other people get in their houses. 
They're incredibly happy. We, have, we believe at Churchill and closing loans on time and early with little or no stress. Okay, if I could do that for you, let's go ahead and talk. Okay, now I'm going to touch number five. Now, touch number six, another indirect. Okay, uh, think of an indirect as anything that will make them think. So I do everything from write blogs to create videos that I've already pre-packaged pre and I send them something to make them think. Okay, uh, hey I wrote a short blog yesterday on the housing market today, low inventory, where rates are, where I think they're going to go. Take a look at this white paper and let's talk about this. That makes sense? It's just a little, it's just another way for me to touch them. Now, then I get to number seven, then I get real direct. Okay, I go back to my direct strategy. Here's what I say. Have you noticed how hard I've worked to earn your business? Has any other mortgage person worked this hard? Seems like you want to do this, but you're stuck on one thing. Is that right? What are you stuck on? You stuck on the rate? You stuck on you don't know if you should purchase a house? What I'm trying to do is find that objection because I can't help you until you commit. But once you commit, I'm not going to let you fail. Everybody see that? Now, I may combo this with direct mail piece, um, gifts. I've got now where I take, you know, do, do, do certain things with people, like take pictures of people, frame those pictures up, write a note, send it to them. I mean, there's all kinds of things I'm trying to use as a follow-up strategy, but I want to go seven good touches, okay? How is this different than what you're currently doing? Because once I go out, once I come into my day, this is all part of my sales cycle. I got a hit list of people I'm going after. I got a farm club of people I'm going seven touches with. I got top 25. I'm trying to touch three of those people a day. I'm hitting my database with some type of database blast. Okay? I'm doing some type of event, some type of realtor event, which can be with four to six people, by the way. Don't think you got to do events. It's got to be expensive. Okay? Me and, me and four real estate agents can get together and just do a little mastermind. You know one of the best strategies I used several years ago was I said I'm doing a mastermind for people who want to earn over a million dollars personal income per year. We're going to get together maybe one, one night a month and just talk about how, how, how we think we can do it. You'd be shocked how much business I got out of that. It was free. We brought in some food. We sat around and just talked shop. But a lot of those people, just through interacting with them over the course of a year, they ended up doing business with me. It was just a little mastermind. Didn't really cost me anything. Okay? It's free. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm working all these strategies to drive up my leads. Then once a person gets in my pipeline, I'm going seven touches. And then I'm making a decision that I want to continue pursuing them or not. And if I don't want to continue pursuing them, I just put them in my database. And maybe we go back to them at a time in the future, or maybe we don't. How does this look different than what your current follow-up looks like? That's good. Yep. And listen, you don't have to be afraid of being direct with people. I mean, you can't lose something you don't already have. You follow what I'm saying? So all they can say is, look, I'm not interested. We decided not to move forward with this. Okay, I'd rather know now. Hey, but if you do move forward at some point in the future, let's say they use another loan originator. Uh, they use another company. Here's what I'd say. I understand. Hey, maybe there's a 50-50 chance this may work out. Maybe it don't. But if it don't, I want you to come back to me in the future. No hard feelings. See what I'm saying? They'll remember that. I hope it works out for you. I, I could bank 100% on us working out for you. I, I can't speak for them. But if it don't, come back to me in the future. Okay? It's not a lost deal. All right, now, out of these strategies, which one are you confused by? Now, when should you be doing this? Okay, when, when should you be doing these things? Because if, if you're looking at them, you know, it's hard to read my writing sometimes. Here, here, here's what we're looking at, guys. We're looking at these strategies right here. That's all we're doing. Is we're coming into the, the, the day, and I got a plan. I got a hit list of people I'm calling on. I got a farm club of people that are interested. I got new clients I'm loving on. I'm trying to get to a better place, right? So they'll send me referrals. I got my top 25 I'm trying to cultivate. I've got my events I'm doing, and I've got my connector strategies I'm using. I'm, I'm using all of these every day. Here's what I would tell you. I don't know which ones are going to work, which is why I got to do so many of them. You follow what I'm saying? I'm going to combo that with these. Now, when I say work my database, what I'm saying is communicate with my database. So I go out and generate leads. Those leads go to a lead tracker, that, and those, they're tracked based on where I'm at. So when I speak at lunch today, there'll be a place on there that says Maggiano's Flooring Association, and there was four people from that event that were interested in me coaching them. Does that make sense? I can go into that lead tracker at any time, hit those people with an email. I can pick up the phone and call them. 
My sales team will be working them. But what I'm saying is that information, I'm collecting information, I'm putting it in my database, and then I'm emailing those people, right? And I'm, I'm writing different emails. So if you study personalities, I may send a very direct email, like right in your face. Like how long are you going to go at this on your own, man? Like I would never do this to try to think you can reach your own potential on it. It's crazy. Direct. The next email may be a soft email. At 25, I went through a period of de complete depression and I felt rejected and I really needed something to pick me up. That appeals to a different personality type. Does that make sense? So my emails are not the same. One email I'll tell a story. One email, one email I'll be direct. One email I'll hit them this way. One email I put a video in there. Follow what I'm saying? And I'm just pushing that stuff out as much as I can. Some people say, I'm out. I opt out. You know what I say? Great. Thanks for telling me. Okay? Now, I joke with people and say this. I lose a friend on Facebook every day. Okay? I got 5,000 friends on Facebook. And, and every day I look on there, it's like $49.99. Which means what? One of them dropped out on me. Then I look over at the people who have requested to be my friend, and there's like 200. And I go right over to that list, and I click confirm, and I go back to 5,000. That make sense? Now, should I focus on the one that opted out or the two or 300 trying to get in? You tell me. Which one should I focus on? <laughs> so I've changed my mind about rejection. They're not rejecting me. They just don't like what I have, and that's okay. I don't, I'm not even looking for them. What's the likelihood of them buying my services if they don't like me? Right? What's the likelihood of them buying my services that think I push too hard? So let's just go ahead and get it on the table. You don't like it and it's okay. Move on. There's somebody else trying to get in. Well, that's what you got to think. So when I'm hitting my database, I'm communicating with my database. If you say, well, it communicates with the database too much, then, then that's okay. I'm still going to do it, right? Like that opinion of me is not good because there's 10,000 other people in there. And some of them say what? I wish you'd communicate with me daily. So you got some that say communicate with me more. Some say communicate with me less. I just want to pump that stuff out over and over and over. Now, it's easy, it'd be easy for you to say, well, he's not in the mortgage business. If I was in the mortgage business, what do you think I'd be doing? Everything I'm currently doing today. I would have my own mortgage podcast. I'd write a little mortgage book. I would have my events every single month. I'd be working my selling system every day. I would, there is nothing I would change if I was a mortgage originator than what I currently do today. Everybody see what I'm saying here? I would try to get as much attention as I could because the people that are getting the most attention are making the most money in the mortgage business. Follow what I'm saying? Okay. Now, what questions do you have about these things? So when I'm saying work my database, I'm saying it's a little, I'm saying a little bit different than how most real estate coaches coach this. They're saying go in, call people, what I'm saying is build a tribe of people, communicate with those people, but create value for those people. Follow what I'm saying? Okay? All right, what's your questions on anything that has to do with the system? Are you prospecting two hours a day like you should be? Can everybody give me a firm commitment on that one? Y'all don't seem so sure. Don't, hey, when you look down and to the left, it means you're nervous. Let me ask you a couple questions. Are you serious about new money? You want to make some more money? You want to help more families? Okay. Do you have conviction about that? <laughs> that conviction should come with action. Two hours of prospecting every day. I do it in the morning. People ask me all the time why I do it in the morning. Studies show people are happier in the morning. They're more open. They're more receptive. People are grouchier in the evenings. They're less receptive. They're tired. So what I do is I just made up my mind. You say, well, I can't get in touch with them in the morning. Don't matter. You still bang on them, right? I may hit somebody in the morning and then follow back up with them later in the day. Hit them in the morning, follow them up the next night. Hit them on the, during the week and follow up with them on the weekend. Just because I initiate it between 9 and 11 don't mean that's the only time I'm going to talk to them because they may call me back whenever they want to or never call me back at all. And if they didn't, I call and leave a voicemail. And here's what I say. I must have did a poor job of explaining my services because if I had done a better job, you would have called me back by now. It's not your fault you're not calling me back. It's my fault. That's what I say to people when they don't call me back. It's not your fault. It's my fault. If I would be more compelling, be more interesting, have a better solution for you, articulate my value, you'd already call me back by now. So it ain't even your fault that you ain't called me back. It's mine. Okay? A lot of times people will call me back when I leave that voicemail. The guy I called this morning, I've already called him once. He called me back. He kind of brushed me off. I'm not finished with him. You follow what I'm saying? I just get back up and go right back at him again, just in a different way. 
Now, let me, let me close with this. This concept of working a selling system is not all consuming. I don't work this all day long. I don't want you to think like I go to work and all day long this consumes my whole day. What I want you thinking is a percentage of my day is spent working this system till it just becomes a way of life. I get up, I go to the office, I have a hit list, I have a farm club, I have top 25. And every day, just make a little bit of progress. Every day we close some sales and some days we go and we don't close anything. Does that make sense? Then we have a day where we close a bunch of sales all in one day. Okay, then it's like bam, it all hit. But it didn't start today. Like I didn't, I didn't sell it today. I've really been selling it for the last three, six, nine months. You go back further, I've really been selling it for the last 15 years. See what I'm saying? It's just my mindset is in a forward posture every day. Okay? 98% of mortgage people do not work a selling system. They come to the office in a reactive posture and they wait on something to happen. Okay? And that can't be how you're going to do it. You've got to come in with it. You've got a selling system. We just need you to work that selling system. Does that make sense? Any questions? It'll work, man. You know, the, the, I've got a $142 million mortgage producer that I coach. And she comes to class every month. She never misses a class. Sometimes she comes twice. Which is the reason when people tell me they're too busy to come to class to learn, I ask them this question, are you doing $142 million of production? Because if she can come, you can come. You know what she does? She comes and listens, takes one concept, and within the next day she's doing it. It's amazing. Like she don't come and like just like get entertained by me. She literally comes and goes, I'm gonna try that. Boom, do it. The next, I mean literally the next day. And it's amazing. Most people come and listen to it and then they don't go do it. You see what I'm saying? But not only that, she'll come to class and have a breakfast before class with two real estate agents and a lunch after class with two different agents. You see what I'm saying? Like she works it, man. I mean, like a, like a, like a cheetah. It's amazing. Other mortgage originators do, do everything they can to get to class, just to be in there. She's figuring out how do, I, how do I work every angle that I can? How do I extract every piece of value out of this? Which is why she's doing $142 million. Does that make sense? So, so you got to get out of your mind, I'm too busy to grow, I'm too busy to learn, I'm too busy to go to class, I'm too, you're not, it's an excuse. You got to get rid of that. What you got to do is come get it, go do it. And some of it's going to work for you and some of it's not going to work for you. Come get it, go do it. That's what the big boys and big girls do. You follow what I'm, what I'm saying here? They don't just listen to people, they, they literally go try it. And it may flop for you, uh, but, 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 but it can't be a lack of effort because you're not trying it. If the biggest players are doing it, you need to say, what is she doing? What's he doing? What are they doing? Like I'm telling you, my guy who's doing $85 million a year is doing big customer appreciation events. You may not be able to start and do big ones like him, but you know he started off just doing a few deals. He started off as one loan originator. No team, no assistant, no nothing. Then he got to 10 or 12 deals a month, and he got him a little assistant, right? But, so, but, but what you, so here's what you're doing. I, I look at people that I compete with that are spending a uh, million dollars a month on marketing. I can't spend a million dollars a month on marketing. But I can spend something on marketing. So I look at them and I go, I can't do everything he's doing, but I can do something like he's doing. Follow what I'm saying? And then I try to go do it. Some of it works, some of it don't. But y'all are a ripe group of people here. This is the future of the mortgage business, by the way. Young, hungry, Right? I mean, what I saw up in Grand Rapids a few weeks ago, when I was up in Grand Rapids speaking, the Churchill event, all those young 20 to 30 year olds up there, I mean, they put on an event that had, shoot, 100 agents, maybe more, maybe 150 agents, and had a morning, we spoke to brokers in the morning, then we did agents, I mean, it was a good deal, right? Now, how do they follow up and convert? That's, that's, that's where we're looking at now. But, but listen, they're only 20 to 30 years old. They're no different than you. They just got something special going on up there. You could build the same thing right here, and you got an advantage because you're in Brentwood. This is the mothership of Churchill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you got a huge advantage, and you got Stephanie fighting for you every day. What more do you need? Okay. Any questions? I got to give me some orange shoes like that. Those are killer. Orange? Yeah, or whatever color they are. They're nice. They are nice. They are nice. Yeah. Yeah. Are we good? If you got questions, I just need to see your face every month in class. 
There should be no excuse for you not coming to class. You know why? Look at all them real estate agents in there. For the love of goodness, 60% of those 600 people are real estate agents. What should you be doing? Sitting beside them, take them to lunch, following up, having breakfast before class. Instead of going out and trying to find people in the world, I'm, bring, <laughs> I'm bringing them to you on a silver platter. Get in there and work them, right? Get in there and work them. You know, my real estate agent not long ago had a paid partnership with another mortgage originator. He's doing 120 deals a year. He had a paid joint venture with a mortgage originator. And that woman that I'm telling you about, that I'm coaching, got in there and extracted that relationship and took every bit of that business. You know why? She didn't accept. She, she didn't accept it. She's like, just because he's doing business with somebody else don't mean I can't get it. Because what if I create more value than that person? Does that make sense? I want you to think about that. Most people go, oh, they're already doing business with so-and-so. I can never get that business. They're in a joint venture, for goodness sakes. That don't mean they're happy in that joint venture, right? You can't assume anything. You got to go into it going, if I can create more value, they'll come to me. Okay? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. If you got any questions, hey, email them to me. Okay?